Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We're telling the truth about silver. Today is Wednesday the 27th of January 2021 and we're commenting just prior to the Fed's FOMC announcement on interest rates and Fed Chair Jerome Powell's statement which will be given thereafter. We're looking at what gold and silver and the US dollar are anticipating prior to the announcement. So let's take a look. Okay, firstly, just a quick shout out to our video yesterday entitled Gold and Silver versus Interest Rates, What is the Relationship? Where we looked at the relationship between gold and silver prices and the rise or fall of interest rates. Perhaps showing that the much vaunted negative correlation argument perhaps does not stand the test of time. And on Monday we produced a video entitled Will the US Dollar Resume Its Decline As Gold and Silver Rise? Well, since that video, we've actually seen a further rise of the US dollar. So, so far, it hasn't resumed its decline. But what will happen in the months to come, we ask? Well, we've placed both of these videos, or links to them, in the description box below. Now, later today, in fact, just a few hours' time, as it's 14.30 here in the UK, that's GMT time, we shall hear from the Fed's FOMC its decision on interest rates and perhaps, arguably more importantly, forward guidance of where the Fed believes their QE will extend to and for how long. Now, we're not expecting a rate reduction today, nor are we really expecting a high degree of clarity, but we are expecting the Fed to try and balance that tightrope walk of stating they will do whatever it takes to keep the economy improving, while at the same time not appear so dovish that the US dollar collapses in value. We also expect to hear some commentary about them working closely with Janet Yellen, who is now Biden's confirmed Treasury sec Secretary, who was sworn in yesterday and is herself a former governor and chair of the Federal Reserve Bank. Now, in a moment, we shall read an article to you, published by Bloomberg, which addresses some of the issues that it expects to be raised today and in the future. But first, just a quick look at the markets to get an impression on what they perhaps are expecting. While well, stocks in the UK and Europe are generally down, around 2%, and the Dow Jones has opened, and that is itself down on opening, 0.15%. The dollar index is up quite strongly at the moment by 0.45 at 90.61. And not surprisingly, as a result of that, gold is down $12 at $1,843. And silver is down $0.39 cents at $25.10. Now, the direction of the dollar and gold and silver prices will be at least for a day or so, perhaps to the end of the week, quite dependent upon what Jerome Powell has to say today. Will silver break below that $25 level and move into $24 territory? Or will it recover and move back up to that sort of area that it seems more comfortable with between $25.50 and $26? Well, much depends upon today. And of course, we shall produce a further video of Jerome Powell's statement which will either be published this evening or, more likely, tomorrow morning. Clearly, markets are uncertain at the moment. But it does appear, at least taking a sort of immediate screenshot of where we are at this precise moment in time, that they're not expecting a particularly strong dovish tone. Will they be right or will they be wrong? Well, we'll know in a few hours. So let's now look at the Bloomberg article, and we will end the video with that article. And therefore, please do leave any comments you may have below. And if you're not a subscriber already, we would very much appreciate it if you would press the subscribe button. So let's look at what Bloomberg had to say yesterday about what's likely to happen today. 
Bloomberg article dated 26th of January 2021. Headline, Powell, with year to run at Fed, aims to avoid past QE mistake. Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell heads into what could be his last year atop the central bank, determined not to repeat the mistake he made when he was a neophyte monetary policy maker seven years ago. Then a Fed governor, Powell was among those leading the charge to scale back the central bank's quantitative easing program, a stance that led to the economically debilitating and market-wrenching taper tantrum of 2013. Powell, whose four-year term as chair ends in February 2022, is likely to sound more cautious this week about curbing the Fed's massive asset purchases, even though the economic outlook has brightened further thanks to an expected big budgetary boost from President Joe Biden. He'll emphasise that the risk of moving too early far outweighs the risk of moving too late, said Lou Crandall, chief economist at Wrightson's ICAP LLC. Powell will hold a press conference on Wednesday after a two-day meeting of the Federal Open Market Committee that is expected to decide to keep monetary policy ultra-easy to fight the economic fallout from the pandemic. As 2013 showed, getting the timing of a taper right can be critical. After then-Fed Chairman Ben Bernanke suggested in May of that year that the central bank might soon begin to rein in QE, long-term interest rates shot higher, upending emerging markets and restraining the US economy. Bernanke's comments came just weeks after an FOMC meeting in which Powell voiced hopes that the Fed might start scaling back asset purchases in June, according to a transcript of that gathering. Could the Fed taper without a tantrum? JP Morgan Chase & Co. Managing Director John Normand and fellow strategists asked in a January 22nd note to clients. Their answer? It's unlikely given current valuations and positioning in financial markets. A Bloomberg survey of economists last week revealed a wide dispersion of views about when the Fed will begin to rein in its buying. While a plurality of 35% expect the taper to start in the first three months of next year, just over a quarter believe it will come in the final three months of 2021. Roughly another 25% do not see it happening until the second quarter of 2022 or beyond. When to taper purchases. Economists divided. The Fed is buying a lot more bonds today than it was seven years ago. It's currently purchasing $120 billion per month, $80 billion of treasury securities and $40 billion of mortgage-backed debt. Compared with $85 billion monthly in 2013, including $45 billion worth of treasuries. But just as was the case back then, the Fed has set a rather amorphous guideline for QE policy. In 2013, the FOMC said it would continue buying bonds until the outlook for the labour market has improved substantially in a context of price stability. Now it says it will purchase at least $120 billion of assets monthly until substantial further progress has been made toward the committee's maximum employment and price stability goals. As Powell noted seven years ago, such vague guidance increases the risk that the markets misunderstand the Fed's intentions. The lack of clarity around our stopping rule for asset purchases is itself a financial stability risk, he said at the March 2013 FOMC meeting, just months before Benanke's comments shook the markets according to the transcript of the discussion. Like they were in 2013, investors could again be surprised in the middle of the year by the strength of the economy, this time as a result of more widespread vaccinations, said Robin Brooks, chief economist for the Institute of International Finance. A bond market sell-off could be aggravated by a ramp-up in Treasury debt sales as the government finances fiscal stimulus. They may get run over just by how quickly markets may move, Brooks said of the Fed. Potential change. Another similarity between 2013 and today. 
a potential change in Fed leadership. Benanke was on his way out seven years ago, and nervousness about his potential successor may have contributed to the slide in the bond market, according to Brooks. As 2021 wears on, the financial markets are likely to focus more on Powell's fate. That could compound inflation jitters among investors by increasing uncertainty about future policy, said Mellon, chief economist Vincent Reinhardt. For what it's worth, economists expect Powell to remain at the Fed. About three quarters of those surveyed by Bloomberg said they expect Biden to offer him another term. The Fed chairman has acknowledged that his fears in 2013 about the risks posed by QE proved to be misplaced. The taper tantrum left scars on anybody who's working at the Fed at that time, Powell told the 2019 annual meeting of the American Economic Association. I was one of those who raised concerns when I first got to the Fed about asset purchases. While it was appropriate to raise them, they didn't really bear fruit. We didn't see high inflation. We didn't see asset bubbles, he said. The takeaway from the episode is that markets can be very sensitive to views about the balance sheet, he added. That's why he's now promising to give investors plenty of time to digest a potential change in policy. We'll communicate very clearly to the public, and we'll do so, by the way, well in advance of active consideration of beginning a gradual taper of asset purchases, he said in a January 14th webinar. Despite such efforts, a sharp increase in long-term interest rates is virtually inevitable, according to former New York Fed President Bill Dudley. As the Fed scales back and eventually eliminates its bond purchases, investors will demand higher yields to fill the void, the Princeton University senior research scholar wrote in a January 21st Bloomberg Opinion column. There's no reason for the tantrum to be unduly damaging, providing the Fed is prepared to respond, if necessary, by halting the taper or delaying its initial interest rate increase, Dudley added. It just will feel bad relative to the quiescent bond market we've experienced since the beginning of the pandemic. End of article. We hope you have found this video interesting and informative. And if so, please give it a thumbs up and share it on social media. Please ensure that you have subscribed to our channel and press the bell sign so that you are notified of any future videos. Also kindly visit our website at IlluminatiSilver.com and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe either as a free or paying member for regular email updates and offers. Disclaimer. Illuminati Silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners.